Tammy Bruce is a radio host and president of Independent Women's Voice. She joins us tonight. Tammy, thanks a lot for coming on. Well, it's an I've, honor. I've to never be said here this. I worked at Fox you. for ten years. I've, I've never said this on the air, but I've thought it the whole time. You've got one channel that disagrees with all the other channels. You have an island of dissent in the middle of a sea of sameness, and that's too much for them. And I wonder if we've been lying to ourselves about the extent to which they would like to shut this channel down. I don't think so. What you've described uh, in your commentary is totalitarianism. We've seen it unfold. It is, in fact, part of why I left the left. My first book uh, is called The New Thought Police, warning about this trajectory, that the use of, of uh, the complaining about words or opinions was beyond the conversations that we normally have. It was being designed, and the environment was being designed to be able to destroy people. Now, I love coming on this show. I am honored and proud to be a part of uh, Fox News, specifically for, for what you discussed. I've never been told what to say. I've never been told what not to say. That's I've right. never been removed because of a presumption of what my opinion would be. You and I will disagree and have, and we disagree on many issues. Yes. We will take issue with each other. We even will disappoint each other on occasion. But what we embody here is that we care about each other. We will have those conversations, and we will uh, be able to have them about other people and have that exchange. What's manifesting here is a desire to shut that down across the board. And if the left thinks that that's a monster that they're going to be able to control and just aim at us, uh, they're going to be very surprised when that monster gets out of its bottle and begins to move amongst all of them. Uh, and this is what I think is a problem for, uh, for society in general and for the larger effort about being able to have these conversations, become a better nation, and become better people, uh, and embrace ourselves and the First Amendment, especially when it's difficult. So I don't really understand the mindset that leads to, and you see it on display in the other channels even now, to want to shut down people who disagree. I grew up in a world where magazines were important, and you had National Review and the American you know, the American Spectator, and then you had The Nation and Mother Jones and Village Voice. Sure. It never occurred to me to want to shut the other side down. Why would they want to stop all dissent? What's the point of that? Well, part of what I had a hand in and, and uh, what I still work on making up for in, uh, in these years is this design of, of individuals who we really couldn't argue the details of the issues. We, we couldn't really persuade people on the issues. And the way then, and we've seen, of course, it's not just the American left, but the left around the world. The only way that the left can survive is by shutting down dissent, literally, and eliminating the individuals who might speak up, even just with, with the different idea. The idea, as you've noted, on the issue of conformity, any voice or any individual that is a reminder that we can approach things differently and sometimes offend people and sometimes make mistakes and, as you said, apologize. But the difference is, is that uh, the left can't withstand uh, uh, an environment where there's any challenging because they rely on the collective. They don't rely on ideas. They rely on fear and division uh, and controlling people within that framework. You see it unfolding, of course, still in Venezuela, in Cuba. It was the collapse of the Soviet Union. It's that it's it's the antithesis to individual personal freedom, which involves the, the need to have larger conversations to be able to speak our mind without fear and without being bullied or threatened because right. we might um, uh, deviate uh, from what uh, the left uh, deems to be a proper and pure thought. We're almost out of time, but I, I just want to know if you, if you think it's right that Republicans in Washington, some of our leaders, people who should be standing up for the other side, for the other view, seem terrified to stray outside the lines well, that have been set down by their enemies. Look, it, it, our society, social media, uh, there's a lot of great stuff about social media, but there is a concentration of rage that very often is um, contrived. Uh, it's manipulated yes. and managed politically. And on social media, it suddenly seems like it's organic, but it's not. And it frightens politicians who think that that's a real reflection of real life. Look. Uh, people are genuinely in involved and engaged in the things that matter in our lives. As a feminist, it matters to me how, how we're all portrayed. But at the same time, we've got to have freedom of thought and freedom of expression. And we have a role in that, and so do the politicians. They've got to feel strong enough and free enough that they can speak their minds and stand up for what's right. 
Amy Bruce, an old-fashioned liberal, and I mean that as a compliment. Great to Thank see you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Tucker.